This weave comes from a small town tucked away deep in the heart of India, from where it gets its name. Chanderi is situated around 200 kilometers away from the historic town of Gwalior in Madhya Pradesh. Located in the Ashoknagar district, Chanderi was founded by the Pratiharas in the 10th century. It was located on the Dakshina Path, the ancient trade route to the Deccan, and it continued to be a significant city in medieval India as it got incorporated within the domain of the Delhi Sultanate rulers. The 14th century Moroccan traveller Ibn Battuta talks about the wealth and prosperity of Chanderi in his records. It once again gained prominence under the Malwa Sultans and Bundela Rajputs who ruled the region in the 15th and 16th century. While we don't know when the weaving of the Chanderis started, there is an interesting legend that links the weave to the Mahabharata. Locals believe that the Chanderi fabric was introduced by Lord Krishna's cousin, Shishupal. Some sources also suggest that the ancient technique of Chanderi weaving existed even between the 2nd and the 7th centuries. Historically speaking, there is evidence to show that the weaving tradition here gained prominence in the 13th century when the town was under Alauddin Khilji's rule. According to local weavers, a saint came and settled here at Chanderi during this time and a community of weavers migrated with him from the area of Bengal. They specialized in silk weaving, especially Chanderi, and started the weaving tradition here. This style, which incorporated working with gold and silver threads, was heavily influenced by Mughal designs at that time. The weavers even made garments for the officials of the Delhi Sultanate and for the Mughal court. However, there's also reference to one of Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb's letter that talks about the decline in the export of Chanderi. It was under the rule of the Sindhyas of Gwalior in the 19th century that the tradition of Chanderi weaving saw a revival and sari weaving also started here. It is said that by the 19th century, the Chanderi fabrics were as valuable as the Dhaka muslin. Visit Chanderi today and you can see the legacy of this weave everywhere. में जब ये बननी चंदेरी साड़ी तो ये रॉयल फैमिली के लिए जैसे साफा है पगड़ी है या उनके यहाँ कोई ब्याह शादी वगैरह उस लेवल से शुरू में वो बनी ये आज ये है कि हर चीज जो है चंदेरी साड़ी के बन रही है
The intricate process of weaving starts with the designing of the sari and its motifs on graph paper. Raw material is then procured according to the design and the yarn is dyed into the desired color. This is an important process as both cotton and silk require dyeing before they can be used on the loom. Dyeing starts with mixing the color dye in warm water. The threads are then dipped into the solution a number of times until the desired color is achieved. Finally, the threads are washed once more and hung to dry. After dyeing, the yarn is normally received by the weaver in the form of bundles. The threads then need to be detangled and stretched in order to make them tighter and suitable for the warp and the weft. A charkha is used to convert the bundles into small rolls called bobbins. Warping or preparing the tana is a lengthy procedure in which the entire family contributes. The chanderi weavers use the old system of preparing the warp roll. The warp log is adjusted on two iron hooks plugged in the ground and the threads are then distributed evenly on it. The threads are stretched to 15 to 20 feet and after every 6 feet are tied to bamboo sticks so that they don't entangle. Using a rod passing through the warp log, a log is rolled to wind the threads on it. This process is generally done for 12 saris at a time, which is a total length of 70 meters. The warp roll is then placed at the extreme end of the loom and the threads are attached to the rouge, which is the leftover of the previous weaving work. The loom is now ready and the weaving begins. Here the weaver engages in three different actions simultaneously. The right hand operates the string that provides motion to the shuttle carrying the bobbin weft across the threads of the warp. The left hand provides an up and down motion to the wooden frame of the loom that falls on the threads of the warp and the weft to guide them to their respective places in the cloth. Both legs move in rhythmic synchronization, providing the motion to the rouge, which helps the threads of the warp and the weft to interlock. Once the weaving is complete, the fabric is taken off the loom and sent for cutting. Today, almost all weavers in Chanderi have shifted from the traditional looms to the looms with fly shuttles and jacquards, as they are more productive. However, despite this change, the essence and exclusivity of the fabric has remained the same. The process of weaving is difficult and time-consuming and depends largely on the design of the sari. Some saris can be finished in a few days while others can take up to three months.